An article in the July 1960 edition of QST Magazine introduced the world to a new single lever Morris paddle. It was compact, streamlined, and heavy. Its style and mechanism was like no other paddle on the market at that time ever since. Welcome to Key History, where we take a brief look at the history, design, and function of Morris keys still used by amateur CW operators today. Today's key is the Electrophysics Corporation's Autronic Key. The Electronic Key was one of the first commercial keys designed from the ground up to be used with an electronic keyer. The key was introduced in 1960 by the Electrophysics Corporation, a marine electronics company based in Newport Beach, California and later in Costa Mesa. The Electronic Key was designed by the president of Electrophysics Corporation, John J. Joukowsky and his son, John J. Joukowsky Jr. An ad in June 1960's QST contrasted the Autronic Key with the Vibroplex Vibro Keyer, which was also released in 1960. The ad stated, The new Autronic Key was designed for use with electronic keyers. It is not a cutdown bug or an adaption of a bug. Every feature, every part was designed solely with electronic keying in mind. The result is a key with performance that complements even the finest electronic keyer whether it be homemade or the latest factory built equipment available. Keeping with the company's primary line of business, the Electrophysics Corporation promoted the Electronic Key as primarily developed for commercial and marine radio applications, even in amateur radio periodicals. The Elder Joukowsky passed away on September 8, 1964, and the Electrophysics Company moved business to Costa Mesa, California in 1965. The advertised price in 1960 was $16.95. The last Electronic ads appeared in 1968 and the key sold for $19.95. Soon after, the Electrophysics Corporation sold off a number of its product lines, but the purchaser did not continue production of the Electronic key. Electrophysics also offered a transistor electronic keyer called the Electronic Keyer for use with the paddle. It had speed, weight, and automatic or semiotic mode, and a built-in side tone monitor with speaker. The keyer sold for $69.50. The Tronic key measures around 3.5 inches square and takes up very little real estate on the shack desk. With its cast iron base weighing in at 2.5 pounds and 3 non-skid rubber feet, the Tronic key remains in place even under heavy use. The paddle is made up of two plastic symmetric finger pieces so that the key may be used by both right or left handers. The contacts are silver. The overall industrial design and color of the key reminds me of the IBM Model B electronic typewriter from the late 50s. The conical lock nuts add to its retro space age look. In the used market, the electronic key can be found in dark or light gray finish. The dark gray finish seems to appear on the Newport Beach keys and the lighter gray on the keys built in Costa Mesa. At the heart of the mechanism is what the 1961 patent application calls a bifurcated yoke, which allows the dit and dot contacts and adjustment springs to move independently of each other. The yoke is composed of a lever and a stirrup attached to a single vertical shaft. The shaft is supported by the base and is held in place with a single screw. The company stated that this design has a low mo moment of inertia and proper damping to provide smooth operation and no contact bounce at a wide range of keying pressure and contact spacing. The cord runs through a small hole in the back of the base. On the bottom of the base, the dit and daw wires attach to screws holding the contact post and the ground wires attach directly to the base. The left rear adjustment screw is a hard stop for the yoke that controls the center position of the pedal lever. The rear right screw adjusts the tension of a spring which pushes against the yoke, controlling the dit force.
The center left screw adjusts the tension of a spring which pushes against the lever, controlling the DAW force. The front two screws control the contact spacing. I set my contacts very close, leaving a slightly wider gap on the DAW contact. Now let's give this key a go. Pros, this key has a heavy base which prevents movement. The rigid lever will never bend. It's very quiet and winning use, not a lot of clicking and clattering. Once the adjustment screws are dialed in and locked down, the spacing and tension adjustments stay put. Cons. Coarsely threaded adjustment screws. Slightly unintuitive adjustment screw locations. The pedal arm does have a bit of vertical play. Actually, the Tronic manual addresses this and states that this is, quote, to provide unnecessary friction which would cause sluggish action, end quote. On eBay, I've seen these keys go anywhere from $40 to nearly $200. I bought my key on eBay for $51 in 2018. However, the finger pieces were missing. Some of the chrome on my key is pitted, and the paint on the base is only in fair condition. I was able to order custom finger piece replacements from 2B Radio Parts, who unfortunately is no longer machining key parts. The Tronic keyers appear to be more rare. I've actually never come across one of them in the wild. And that's it. Thanks for watching.